All right, Shalom. Shalom. Okay, first and foremost, we want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakadash. All right, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. It's the brother Azariah here, the brother Daniel Allah. So I'm just getting the scenery. All right, and we just coming at you with a, with a little quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's going to be a couple of pauses during this lesson because we out in the field, as you can see. And then we just want to go into the herbs. You got the one about her. Let me pause. All right, yep, and I'm going to let this brother read. All right, Shalom, and Salakia. But yeah, the spirit was on us to come out here and uh, gather up some of these herbs so we can kind of show the, the brethren. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let this brother read this precept real quick. Right. This is Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. Right. So the Most High created medicines up out of the earth, right? All right. And Esau teaches us to be afraid of the plants that's in the fields, to be afraid of ingesting and eating these plants. You know, he has used his witchcraft to tell us that these things are not medicinal. These things don't have any benefits. You know, I even uh, came across this ignorant Edomite who was talking about how much salad he ate. And he was like, oh, you know, it doesn't have any health benefits anyway. It's just roughage, you know. And there's these different words that Esau will use to uh, to put an idea in your mind about certain things. OK, because when you even look up that word roughage, it's the plant, it's the portion of the plant that is not digestible. But that's only that portion. The rest of the plant still has medicinal benefits. Even um, romaine lettuce, you get benefits. Iceberg is one of the few plants. Iceberg lettuce is one of the few plants that don't have any benefits. Right. And if I may add, too, well, romaine lettuce, it's a dark leafy green. Meaning what? It has lots of chlorophyll, right? Kind of. Chlorophyll is good for your blood. Right? The reason why uh, iceberg lettuce don't have uh, a lot of those benefits because you look at it, it's barely green. It's, it's a really, really light green. You know, has really no nutritional value. You know, so hey, even even things that are just green in the, in the salad, man, they, 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 they help with the blood with the, because of the chlorophyll. Con, con, con. That chlorophyll is a very important uh, uh, addition to your diet, man. You know, it helps to cleanse out the blood, like the brother said. It's very important. I'm gonna pause the video. All right, you know, so um, I, the brother got another precept lined up. I want to explain why we're reading this because as I was going through the field picking up some of the plants. Okay, that I'm familiar with, I noticed that there were pieces that I have identified that were missing. And they looked like they had been eaten off or picked off. And um, so I'm going to let the brother read this. Right. So this is going to be the book of Job, uh, chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, But ask now the, the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. God. So if you, when you go out and you look at certain things, if you identify nature, you can see some of these plants, okay, that are edible, okay, because uh, animals will eat them. Now, it doesn't mean just run out and eat everything that you see an animal eat. But a lot of these things that the animals eat, it's because they are good to eat, okay? And uh, we, we have an example of that that we'll, that we'll show you here in a little bit. You got something? Okay. Yeah, I got another precept, too, going into that, man. Because, uh, you know... How, how animals are supposed to be taken care of certain animals right this they eat grass God. right they call them uh, herbivores right because they eat herb coming from the word herb man God. they're herbivores that's like right. cows they're supposed to eat grass that's right. so he saw in this in this wicked kingdom he feeds them candy <laughs> right he feeds them uh, uh, corn which gives no gives them no nutritional value but it makes them fat it faster them up. that's right right this is Psalms chapter 104 and verse, let me see here, and verse 14. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Mm. See? He causes forth the grass to come forth for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring food from the earth, man. Okay? And that's one of the most healthiest things you can eat is plants. Okay? And really... Wild plants are going to be even healthier because Esau is, is modified and adds so much stuff to the different plants. When you come out to a location that's not monitored by E or, 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 or kempt by E that's just growing naturally, you get this being fed with rainwater, okay? It doesn't have any pesticides in it, you know? So it's going to be some something that's a little bit healthier for you than what you can find in the grocery store. 
the true organics, okay? Go ahead, bro. Right, and there is another precept. This is uh, Second Ezra chapter nine because when uh, hey, eating eating nothing but plants and fruits, that's considered a fast too. You know, you have something people call the Daniel fast, where Daniel ate nothing but pulse and water. Pulse yeah. is just fruits and vegetables and water. Right. Right. So this is what the angel Uriel told uh, Edris. OK. Uh, uh, um, what he told him to do when he was fasting. OK. Right. It says, uh, but go in second uh, Ezra chapter nine, verse 24. But go into the field of flowers where no houses build it. Right. And eat only the flowers of the field, taste no flesh, drink no wine, but eat flowers only. Mm. Right? And we have a couple of flowers to actually show you that, that are edible, man. Kind. And, and, that, and, and, and that, it really kind of backs up the point I was making about something that's a, a place that's not kept by Esau. Kept meaning kept or, or taken care of or, or, or uh, you know, has human hands touching it. Why? Because you're going to get a lot of stuff. That's why I said where no house is built. Why? Because what, what people do, you know, uh, it was customary to go out into the field and bury your waste. So that would get into the plant, you know, these different things like that. OK, could contaminate the plants. So he said, go where no man, where no house is built, because those plants would be have been pure. OK, and, and they would have grown of themselves, which there's a scripture that goes into that. So we're going to pause. We're going to move around a little bit. Yeah, so this video is definitely going to have to be spliced together later. But I want to go into one of the first wild edibles, okay, uh, that we have that we're not going to take with us. Uh, this is the cattail, okay? It's called cattail. Everybody should have probably seen these at some point. They usually like to grow near ponds and stuff, but they also like areas that have a lot of water. And as you can tell by this ground over here, that's all cracked. This place floods with water and then dries out periodically. And so that's why you see this bed of cattail, okay? This different bed of cattail. I'm gonna show you the edible part of the cattail. So, cattail is not really super substantial, but there's a piece of it that you can eat. And it's like a, it's almost like a fresh, crisp vegetable. Almost, you could probably compare it to like a, well, maybe a cucumber. There's only one portion you can really eat of it. That's really like the inner, the inner soft portion of it. You gotta peel a lot of stuff away from it, honestly. So, yeah, you know, like I said, it's nothing, nothing major. And uh, we may pull up the health benefits. But it's definitely something you can eat. Yeah. And we're looking for the moist inner layer. Mm -hmm. Okay, the very inner part. Because it's taking me a while to get to the middle, that's why I was like, I guess I could just skip it later in there. You good, I'm about to grab those health benefits. Okay. Yeah, trying to get to the part. So the part that's not woody is what we're looking for. A lot of this is feeling kind of woody. So it might have to be a younger one. Because this one is already flowered. Yeah, man, but hey, this is this is knowledge that our, our, our ancestors had in the, in the ancient days, man. Right? That's how how did how did Ezra know? You know, he he had to have known certain flowers to eat. You know, certain flowers that were edible, because we know there's flowers that are not edible. You know. Okay, Khan. Okay, so, you know, we all learn and grow together as we go. So what I'm noticing is the ones that have already flowered, the stem is too woody for you to actually find anything to eat inside of it. So you have to get one that is not flowered yet. Mm -hmm. And this is the softest part. See how little I got out of that whole thing? That's why I said this is not really substantial. But this part here is okay. I'm going to give you a piece of it, bro. Okay. Actually, even that was a little dry. I wouldn't even... But that's, you, you should get the idea. We're looking for a piece like that. That one ain't really a good example. It's probably too dry right now. But they like to grow by water. But usually they have like a moist vegetable like center that you can eat. So I guess that was a fail. 
Yeah. These are different animals. Hey, the scriptures talk about this, man. Hey, in the kingdom, we're gonna we're gonna know what all these different plants are. You know, the elect will know what all these different plants are. Lord, when we be of that number, right? And and hey, you know, the scriptures say uh, uh, we labor to interpret these things, right? They all around us, but we don't know what it is, what it's called. Okay, what's the health benefits we have to labor to interpret? We have to go and research it, take a picture, yeah, right? Try it out to see how it tastes, right? And, and even you brothers that know like about gardening, um, even you know that you have to learn certain things about what a plant likes and doesn't like, and when's the best time to harvest. So that's just kind of being proven here with me knowing this is edible, but and, and having eaten it before, but not finding one that I can eat right now because it's too dry, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, another tip on this is, right here, this part is good kindling. See how dry that is? That'll catch a flame real quick. So if you can learn the different rocks and stuff, or you have a fire starter, you can use this to hold a, hold a flame. Look how fluffy that is. You see? That'll catch flame real quick, and then it'll light the, 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 uh, the leaves, which will in turn light other stuff. And then this part, too, uh, this part's a little more wet, but it can probably be dried out something else can be done with it you know mm -hmm. and you know i could definitely learn more about these these cattails but that very tip has a good good fluff for uh, for kindling okay and i got uh health benefits for cattail it says uh cattail uh the sweet fiber in, in cattail roots mm -hmm. okay provide an abundance of starchy carbohydrates mm -hmm. right so Teams, right. right, things that are rich in carbohydrates. Right. Okay. The new stalk roots can be eaten to obtain vitamin A, B, and C, mm -hmm. potassium, and phosphorus, and the seeds can be ground and used as as a flower substitute. See, so the new the new plant roots are the ones that you're going to get when it's moist. It's probably a little too hot right now, but the new ones they're like a little piece of vegetable. And it's, it's really good and crisp and juicy. And then, like you said, uh, the seeds can be used as a uh, flower replacement. Mm -hmm. And I got that scripture too, bro. Okay, and there's a script. There was a time, I believe it was one of the kingdoms, uh, or one of the times during Israel, if I'm not mistaken, where they were told that they would not eat from things that they harvested, but they would eat of things that grow that grow of themselves. And we'll let the bro read that. Okay. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 37 and verse 30. And this shall be the sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, and the second year that which springeth springeth of the same, and in the third year sow ye, and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. So for two years, it sounds as though they ha the Lord had them eating wild edibles, and then they went out and sowed their own things, you know? Mm -hmm. And even when you plant a regular, like, vineyard, when you let, there was a, there was a law uh, where we don't, we don't reap, a certain, I think, of what is the sabbatical, the land Sabbath? Yes. We have a Sabbath. land Sabbath, and I believe during that time, we let the fruit fall into the ground. We don't reap any of it, and that fruit decomposes into the land and replenishes the land. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we're able to go and, and harvest again because right. the land has been refreshed. Yes, so you take a rest from the land, and it, 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 it uh, recollects all the nutrients. Right. Right, and what happens when you have lots of nutrients, right? You get bigger animals. Mm -hmm. Right, bigger animals like chickens and cows, right, because they're nutrient dense. You know, right. how do you think cows get so big? Eating all that grass. <laughs> That's right. You know, un, 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 okay. Go ahead. Yeah, and un, uh, contrary to popular belief, mm -hmm. most of your protein comes from what? Dark leafy greens. Yes. That's where the mo that's where all the proteins at. Time. Kale has more protein than a steak, man. Yep. <laughs> right. Spirulina has even twice as twice as much as protein as that, huh? That's right, man. Uh, and, and it goes to show you the witchcraft of the witchcraft of Eve. So like I left my bag over here, I'm gonna grab it. That shows you the witchcraft of Eve because he tells you what do you what do you see on the menu when you go to a restaurant and they and when they talk about the meat, what do they label it? They label the meat as protein mm -hmm. to deceive you into thinking that's your only way of getting protein meat that's why you get people that they'll say i'm a meat and potatoes type of guy <laughs> you know as if that's some type of healthy lifestyle 
Now, we can show you now on this example if it's good enough of an of a, uh, angle. Okay, he read that scripture earlier. Ask the beast and they shall teach thee. This is one of the plants. And what do you see right there? Typically, there will be a flower right here. Yeah, well, I can try to point it out. Right here. And right next to it. And right next to it. There will be a flower growing from this stalk. But it's been eaten. Why? Because this is a good plant to eat. And I'll pull it up. Go ahead, bro. Hey, hey, just the other day, I was, um, you know, at this brother's house here. And he has, uh, he has different wild edibles that grows around this house. But uh, there's a gopher that, that lives around there. Yeah. He, he comes right across the street, and he, he goes over, he takes, he sees a dandelion flower, which people perceive those as weeds, but they're not. Those are actually good for uh, uh, detoxification. Sometimes I like to put those in a smoothie, you know? Dandelion greens, the root, the root of the dandelion is good. But uh, the gopher comes over, he eats the flower off the dandelion, right? And he eats a couple of other things that was over there that we recognize that we eat. Right, so ask the beast and they shall teach thee. You can even kind of see here, and this is things that I want to get good at looking for. You notice there's a small clearing kind of right here, you know. And this is more than likely an animal path because everywhere else it's overgrown. But then right here, it's low. And we can walk through. As a matter of fact, I see one of the flowers for that plant. It was eaten. I'm going to try to grab it. Okay. So this is one of the flowers. See how it was similar to the one I showed you earlier, but a little different because it's got a dot in the middle. Okay. This is called Queen Anne's Lace. This camera's not that good. We got to, you know, try to work on stuff to get a better, so we can show better. But this is Queen Anne's Lace or Daucus carota, which is wild carrot. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways you can know you're looking at wild carrot and not wild parsnip, which is kind of poisonous, if I'm not mistaken, parsnip is poisonous in the wild, is that dot in the middle. See how right there is a black dot, almost looks like a bug. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a red dot. It's a lot if I'm shaking a little bit, but this is a, this is a good, you know, good plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what they were eating, this flower stalk. This is the original form of a carrot right here. See, here's the rest of it, of the other one I pulled up, where we showed you the eaten tips. This would be at the end of that eaten tip. Mm -hmm. These flowers. You know, we we'll probably just walk up here a little bit and then turn back. I'm looking for some wild berries, but I don't know if you can find them. All right. You wanna pause it? Huh? You wanna pause? That's the wild part now. Yeah. And it comes white. Oh, yeah. you, 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 okay. So. These actually come white as well. I just mentioned it, uh, the wild parsnip. I looked these up. These are not good for uh, for you to eat. Um, I think there's a part of the plant that's edible, mm -hmm. but the but the uh, actually, you know what? If I'm not mistaken, I read that just touching this can actually irritate your skin. So I'm about to put it down in a second. But um, see how see how the structure is almost kind of similar to Queen Anne's lace. Unless if you weren't familiar, if you found a white one of these, you would kind of think, oh. And that white one we, that I showed the brother earlier was actually a lot more um, compact. It looked very similar to this, right? The one I showed you earlier looked very similar to this. Even mm -hmm. though the bro be seeing stuff, I don't be uh, noticing. You know, different people uh, do have different observation skills. But yes, yeah, so I just want to show that. Don't, don't eat this. And bros, install that uh, app, planting it on your phone. It's really good for iPhone. If your phone has a good camera, iPhone mm -hmm. is known for having good cameras. And I've been able to identify a lot of stuff. And I actually just ate a flower. I'm kind of snacking on it. I'll probably show you. I'm going to show you some more of them. This is a, called an ox eye daisy. It's actually a, it's actually good to eat. Mm -hmm. I put these in the salads. I put these on the sandwich before as the, as the, as the leaf uh, portion of the salad. I mean, of the sandwich. It was good. It was good. Mm -hmm. I think about just All right, so yeah, we're just wrapping up, you know what I'm saying? Um, we both got some things we gotta go do. But yeah, we just want to do that quick hit. You know, uh, the most high created medicines out of the earth, man. See the moon up there in the, in the way in the distance. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, this place is beautiful, but it's gotta be renewed, man, you know? 
all the stuff that's here on the soil of America, Babylon the Great is going to get wiped out. But while we're here, you know, ain't nothing wrong with getting familiar with these things. Imagine if you was, you know, when, when, when we become pilgrims, you know, for those whose lot that is to be, because some of us will be martyred. You know, imagine walking through the field and seeing one of these plants and grabbing one and being and being being refreshed a little bit. You know, nothing wrong with that. So, uh, yeah, man, we're just gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Like I said, cause we gotta go, bro. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole elect. All right, may the blessing of a lecture fall upon your house. With that, we're going to say, Shalom. Shalom.